what I'll probably do is leave this still tomorrow and uh, yeah I'll get back to you guys so off camera I took some sandpaper and a file and I cleaned out the inside of this race and uh, now this fits quite snug but tight Sorry, <laughs> quite snug but uh, moves freely what I'm doing here is milling out an opening so the numbers on the degree wheel can be seen while making adjustments. Right there, lock down the table this direction, and then eye it up, make sure we're out way off. All right, so I've set the depth stop. And I'm just going to take the two hundred thousandths uh, that I cut for the recess. Just cut a slot through here. Alright, so now I'm going to see if that window is big enough to actually see my number, and I do believe it will be. Oh yeah, that's perfect. This next step was not originally part of the plan. If you look closely, you can see the compound only has three threaded holes. I decided to drill and tap three extra holes for a total of six bolts. I'm going to do all the operations that I can uh, without moving the mill or uh, changing the workpiece around um, because I want everything to be set up fairly accurate and for all the bolts to line up perfectly. So anyway. I've got the end mill in here, uh, which I'm going to use to counter bore, and uh, I've got it zeroed out. I'm going to plunge into this 300 thousandths and uh, hope for the best. And that was 300 thousandths. Now we'll set up and do the rest of them. I still have to uh, take a clearance cut out of the top plate and thread the bottom hole. I'll probably do a time lapse of that. Here I'm using a starter bit and then switching over to a small drill bit and drilling all the way through into the compound. I then used an end mill to countersink the degree wheel to accept the heads of the new bolts. Well, the thing that just happened is not good. I just broke off the uh, center drill in the workpiece. So I'm going to now attempt to drill out the center drill. I don't have a carbide end mill or a center drill, so I may be screwed. Yeah, that's not working at all. Maybe if I use the end mill, 
I don't know. I'll have to figure something out. All right, that seems to have worked. Um, I don't know where the piece of the bit went. I might just be pushing it down through, but I'm going to try center drilling it again. And then I need to figure out how to set my zero. Um, yeah, because I don't, I can't touch the end mill off on that surface anymore. So I'll have to put like a 20 thou shim and then set zero and then minus 20 from it. Anyway, see what happens. So it appears to have worked. I almost, I almost made my day really bad there by being careless. Anyway, you can see the head now fits in there. What I'm doing here is using the end mill to locate the center of the hole. Once the center was located, I removed the degree wheel, inserted a tap and a collet, and used a wrench to do the tapping. This ensured that all of my holes were perpendicular to the work. I just finished tapping out the remainder of the holes. So now I just need to drill the clearance hole and we'll be good to go. So I've got my clearance drill bit in there. Not a special type of drill bit, but the one that's the right size to drill a clearance hole. I'm going to set the, the Z stop, I guess. I'll put the plate on. Drill out the first one, rotate it, drill out the second one, so on and so forth. This isn't going to be much of a drill. It's only probably a hundred thousandths, maybe. We'll just drill to the stop. That's it. And we have two more of those to do. There we have it. These are the original holes and these are the new holes and they've threaded in. So that means all I need to do now is shorten these bolts and thread them in and then I can put everything together. Alright, so I've got all the pieces finished and uh, so now I'm just going to assemble it and talk about it a little bit as I assemble it. So, just in case the horse isn't thoroughly dead, uh, this piece is the replacement for this piece. As you can see it has six holes instead of two. It's considerably thicker and yeah it's uh, a lot longer. So we'll set that there. So the way this works, this sits on here like so. Nice snug fit. And then we have to line this up the correct way. Oh, I have to line this up the correct way so that the numbers read properly so the angle is right. So that is 90, I believe that's correct. I'll just flip it this way and see 60 would be there. Yep, so that's right. So now we'll put the bolts in. This came from the factory with three of these bolts that went here, here, and here. And I added holes and tapped them so that it now has six bolts. So now there are six bolts 
on the pull down plate <clears throat> where there used to be two and six bolts on the whatever this is the uh, dial the I'm not sure what it's called but um, there used to be three bolts on it and now there are six so it's a lot more of a rigid setup hopefully that will translate into a better cutting machine it works fairly well while turning doing basic turning operations where it lacks um, where it's lacking is anytime you try to do a cutoff if you try to use a cutoff tool uh, do any kind of plunge cuts it just it yeah it does really bad stuff it ended up uh, let's see my cutoff tool here it ended up the last time I did a cut it broke the end off and was quite violent I don't know if you've ever had a high-speed steel tool fetch up and break on you but it's yeah it's uh, it's pretty it's <laughs> pretty violent. Anyway, we'll tighten down these bolts. I don't know why I waited to tighten this one, but there we go. We've got that done. Simply flip this over. I drilled and tapped four more holes. These two are original and it used to use bolts to hold this down in my case anyway and um, so I've added studs to it and now that goes on there like that. We've got our nuts And the locating pin is what actually holds the compound in place so that it's uh, true this way. So I guess parallel, perpendicular, I don't know what you call it, perpendicular to the, to the cross slide, I guess. And so yeah, now we have nuts on there. I generally run this at 60 degrees, so I'll rotate it to 60, and I'm going to move the camera and see if I can pick up on the uh, dial. It's a little bit tricky to get a shot of with a camera uh, because the hand wheel is in the way, but as you can see there, it is set to 60 degrees. So that is the window that we cut out. It's all mounted up and I am ready to take a test cut. I'm a little bit nervous. All right, this is attempt number four. I haven't been able to get the camera angle right, so let's see if it works this time. Definitely working a lot better than it ever has. I must have done a pretty good job sharpening the tool. Pretty close. All right, there we have it. There's a little nib left on, but the surface finish is quite nice. I'm not sure if the camera will be able to pick up that here, but anyway, yeah, that surface finish is quite nice. I know it might not seem impressive to cut off a piece of three quarter inch stock, but it is something that this lathe was never capable of before. 
The chips look quite nice. It's cutting. It didn't chatter except for at the very start of the cut when I was uh, not putting enough pressure on the tool. So uh, anyway, I call this a success.